Welcome to a new episode of Sportsy. Uh, let's talk sports. Today we have somebody with us who uh, had a, tip, a career with IT. From there he moved to to consulting, and from there uh, landing a job with uh, uh, sports consulting with Lagardia Sport. He is based in Germany and working on sports consulting with infrastructure side or the the arena side a lot. And uh, uh, we just want to have a chat with him uh, around what sports consulting is all about and how the sustainability of sport is considered through infrastructure and what are the things that uh, probably aspirants looking at working in the european model what are they possibly look at and how what is the role for them to work in europe so with that i want to welcome uh, saurabh thank you for liking thank you for sharing and thank you for watching but please do subscribe on our channel sports he says and follow sports he says across all the social media handles help us spread the word of sports he let's talk sports Please subscribe to Sports He Says. Hey, hi, Saurabh. Great to have you on Sports He. Let's talk sports. Sure, happy to be here, sir. Like always, it's always a pleasure to chat with you. The best part is we love to talk about sports, and that's what the whole thing is all about. Let's talk sports. So, for 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 the viewers, uh, Saurabh is a great friend and uh, been part of the sports industry internationally for quite some time on the consulting side, developing the whole, mainly working the football side, and uh, is currently the director at Lagardia Sports, uh, based in Germany, ex KPMG guy. So yeah, it's a it's a different mix of uh, sports consulting and. Uh, technology and the whole business side of sports uh, so it's it's i'm looking forward to this exciting talk with you uh, saurabh how did you land up in sports okay um first of all thank you for inviting me um for this chat appreciate it okay um so back in 2009 then um, like a lot of uh, guys in india i was working for a it company and uh, yeah i was dreaming about one day somehow working in uh, european sports um fortunately or unfortunately for me um, at that time uh, it was a massive financial meltdown going on and i decided to do my uh, mba outside india that was for sure from day one so i was looking at the us market and looking at canada and i had couple of offers from there um but somehow it was a very costly and b as meltdown was in full upswing especially in the us with massive mm -hmm. uh, disruption in the european market at that time i thought that okay let me look at other options also which are a not very costly and b um which is short term so that even though i'm out of workforce it shouldn't be pretty long so yeah. i don't want to do a two year mba then another six eight months of internships or something and then go to the place where i really wanted to go mm -hmm. so that was a three year outlay i didn't want to waste that um so i started looking at european uh, side of uh, mba and then i applied for a couple and fortunately i got into mannheim which was nice. uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of the better schools in german um, landscape so i came here in 2011 and then i uh, did my mba for a year and after that i wanted to get into management consulting and my background was mm -hmm. it so that mm -hmm. was a bit struggle especially um, language was not something that i was very comfortable with and right. this was back in the day so german was still and it still is extremely important but it was more back then so uh, with that in mind i did a couple of internships with oliver wyman with uh, proseben that's where proseben is sort of germany's second largest media company they are like um, you can compare it with sony or z or something like that right, right. they have five six different channels so i started working in proseben and fortunately for me um, i worked in their digital and adjacent department so basically what mm -hmm. they did was they looked at um, everything digitalization in terms of media right so they looked at okay how can they record stuff how can they um, put it in different website how can they interact with fans and this was back in 2011 so uh, that company was still trying to figure out what to do where to go and how digital they want to be right? right so um was it the right time at the right place so i looked very closely on um, what they are doing especially in media industry and as sport was also one of the bigger part um, bigger portfolio i started making couple of connections there and 
yeah, um, I worked a lot in analytics there. I worked a lot in business development, especially um, business plans and, and supporting my bosses in negotiations. So it was a six months internship that I did. And then post that, I thought that, okay, it's no point in doing any more internship. It was almost 10 months after my MBA. So I started looking for a full-time job. I was comfortable. Got into KPMG and um, at that time, Lagarde Sports. So I uh, got into both, um, but as my visa was expiring and uh, Lagardere had no background in hiring non-European Union guys, so they decided to pull uh, the offer out. Mm -hmm. So then I joined KPMG, but then they came back again and they said that, okay, we really like you um, and then we want to hire you. So that's how I got into uh, Lagardere Sports, but I'll tell you a couple of... I'll, go just one or two steps back and I'll tell you a couple of things that I did, uh, which helped me to get to secure a role in a company where they never right. hired a non-European guy. And I didn't even speak the language. I still don't speak a good German. So and I'm still here six years later. Um, so what I did was that I started building my connection in Prozeban. And then I started mm -hmm. approaching uh, those guys and um, requesting them if they can make a couple of intro introduction in different spaces and sports industry because I only looked sports in terms of um, two tenants I would say one is actual as a fan and second as a it's more of a player business which it is but yeah. those were the two exposure I had I had no exposure in business side so then I started asking um, if they can make those connections and I uh, contacted a couple of guys via them who are kind enough to reply and then through that, I figured out that, okay, there's a sponsorship part of the business also. Okay, how does marketing support sponsorship in that context of sports? And this is back in the day when apps were not there, websites were really crappy. So yeah. that sort of the context, right? Um, then I also looked at, okay, what is happening in media landscape? I did some research and I was also looking at, okay, where else can they make money? So I started reading a lot. Um, so that's how whenever I had a conversation, I always try to open a couple of more threads that, okay, sure, that sponsorship is great, but I'm also interested to learn about ticketing. Do you know someone? And mm -hmm. then if they had a good feeling with the discussion, they introduced me to those guys. So I had a few more calls like that. And then um, yeah, I saw an opportunity with my current department, with my current boss back in the day. And uh, yeah, I connected with the team who was doing the recruitment. And I said that, look, I don't speak German, but I'm very motivated and I have decent experience and a good degree. So can mm -hmm. I do something? And between the lines, I figured out that um, at that time, they had a project coming in from Italy and mm -hmm. they had a project coming in from Greece. So I, without asking anything, I did my own market research. So I did a 50 page presentation for them about everything you can think of in terms of Greek football. I sent it to them along with my CV saying that, look, this is what my experience is, which is zero in sports, but this is how I work. Mm -hmm. So they really liked it. And then I got straight away invited for interview within the next three, four days. So that's how it oh. all went through. Wow. So I, so I think what we, what we can learn from this is being the, just don't wait for the opportunity, make the opportunity happen. Uh, I think the, and, Put put the right effort. Make make the make them select you rather than you waiting for your selection to happen. Yeah, that's one way to look at it for <laughs> sure. But it's much more about okay. I can talk about myself. I cannot talk about others, right? So yeah. myself, my point of view. I wanted to get in there, and I thought that okay. I've gone through all this. I've done my work. So if I have to do something extra to get into this, why not? Mm -hmm. So I did that extra effort to make myself look more attractive in terms of the other things that were not working out. So for example, language was not my thing. I was non-European Union guy, but I had right. other things working for me because you can experience that from your background. I had mm -hmm. IT experience. Okay. I had experience in top MBA. Well, so Mannheim is number one in Germany and top 10 in Europe. So at that time it was eighth. Um, I had management consulting experience. So that brings a completely different view. And for KPMG, yeah. I worked for six months and I was doing basically their um, internationalization project. So if a company in Europe wanted to go to India, then how can they set up their business in? Right. So we were looking at every single thing. So from legal to real estate to actually recruitment, 
um, to establishing the IT process completely uh, back office process for them. So that gave me a completely different view, which I to this date utilize in some of the other way. Yeah, I think it's a it's a it's a great uh, journey, and people, the students also or aspirants want to consider the international market. I think the education is one route that they can consider uh, to make it happen. So you've been uh, playing a, a great role with Lag Lagaria for some time now, like almost six years. So uh, my question is now about about the role or uh, your liking is how do you think the sports marketing is different for a mature market vis-a-vis -vis, uh, a mature market or the upcoming market? Um, look, before I jump into that, let me give you a bit more about my role. And and problem is, <laughs> uh, we are now called Sport5. So we were just yeah. bought by a private equity fund called HIG yes. Capital. Um, and they rebranded us back to Sport5 from Lagardia Sports. So um, let me give a brief about my role at um, Sport5. So my role is basically a sort of management consulting with actual implementation um, experience. So that's what Lagarde or Sport5 expects from me, right? So what I do is um, me and my team, we work across Europe and we work basically across four pillars, all right? Pillar one is called feasibility. So there we go to different leagues and different clubs and different governments and mm -hmm. who want to build a stadium. Uh, so we help them to create basic concept and if club has the money and they want to build the stadium, then we help them out to figure out that, okay, um, what is the socioeconomic conditions you have to look at? What is commercial conditions you have to look at? What is design and operation conditions you have to look at? What mm -hmm. is the condition in terms of media, in terms of uh, um, your um, uh, schedule, and in terms of your uh, organization structure, you have to think. So once you've considered everything, then you develop a business plan accordingly, right? Because And that right. business plan gives you an estimation that, okay, a 20,000 seater, 40 million or 50 million stadium, you can refinance. But if you want right. to make 100 million, then all bets are off. It's You're taking a massive risk and you shouldn't do it. That's generally the way um, we try to do it. So that's the phase one. Now, in that phase, my role is basically um, looking at all the commercial and uh, operational aspects of it. Right. So basically what I do is I sit with different stakeholders, whether it's a club, whether it's a, a government, and we try to teach them that, okay, this is how you can commercialize the stadium best, but this mm -hmm. is how you have to operate it, right? So we look at all different angles. We try to explain them. We try to get their point of view, because if you're a government, your point of view and your expectation is completely different in terms of output than if you're a club. So mm -hmm. we try to manage all things together try to communicate in a good way so that before we go to design and construction and all other parts, you already have a decent idea of what your stadium is. And then right. you can start doing the design. And that's the problem you see generally in the market that people, first clubs or government or anywhere, who they first go to these guys from uh, design and construction company, they have no idea, no expertise in the market. They build something which they think A, looks good, so government is happy, and B, is sort of does the basic work so the club is okay and that's not a good solution you want your stadium if you're building it for 25 years you want to get it refinanced operations what we do is we work with clubs and stadiums so we look at both aspects of it right you look at all the tenants who are in stadium it could be a multifunctional arena like i was head yeah. of strategy for friends arena in stockholm where i looked at um, all the revenue streams so in case of multifunctional arena it could be uh, event basically getting all the events in whether it's sports or concerts or a family event doesn't matter or bike racing event right so you look at event you look at ticketing you look at um, sponsorship sales you look at hospitality sales fnb mm -hmm. and corporate events so right. you look at across all those areas and then you look at actual operations so in case of football you have to look at pitch in case of concert, you have to look at what are the different structure, where you have cleaning, where you have security, so on and so forth. Right. So I've worked across all those areas for at least five or six projects now across whole Europe. So it's multifunctional arena. It's also it's stadium, right. football stadium also. So depending on that, uh, because of that decent experience, I'm also being utilized within Lagardere to uh, work with our business development team to explore opportunities in other markets also. So that's why mm -hmm. we are having a couple of discussions in India, right. but nothing is yet concrete. And we also, because of experience across the value chain from uh, revenue to cost, 
Um, we also work very closely with our innovation team. So we look at what's going on in the market, what we can bring into the company, what could help. So we work with a few startups and we want to scale that business. So I'm part of that team also. So that's more or less about the background that I'm in. And mm -hmm. uh, so marketing is one part of the whole piece of the puzzle that we look at, right? right. Um, so like you said, sports marketing and its role in mature market for a new market. Um, again, it's very hard to give you a concrete answer because it depends on who you're looking at, right? Yeah. So I would say there are three main tenets that you look at, right? Whenever you talk about marketing, so they look at, okay, shall I want to do this for fans? Or do I want to do this for brand? That's the second tenant. The third one is, okay, do I want to do it for me as a club, right? And let me give you a bit brief about how that would change the whole discussion, right? So if I'm uh, fan oriented, right? I'm looking at from the lens of the fans. Then what I want to know is, okay, how can I better understand the fans? How can I better reach and activate our fans? And how can we monetize our fans? Those are the main questions. And those questions changes where the fan is. If it's in China, if he's in China or India, the marketing would be different. The approach would be different. The utilization of uh, the club resources would be different than let's say compared to a fan who's based out of uh, the home turf, right? Mm -hmm. And that again changes even in developed markets, right? In Europe also, you have top five leagues and then you have Hungary. Yeah. which is part of Europe, but then again, it would be somewhere in the middle between extremely developed to uh, completely um, nascent market and hunger would be somewhere in the middle. So again, it completely depends who you're targeting, what is the message you want to give okay. and what is the benefit that you want to convey to them? Because if there's no benefit, they don't want to work with you. So every single thing has to be something that makes them interested in what you are pushing and then so it's very hard for me to say um whether it's a b or c it completely depends on the problem completely depends on the company completely depends on the club how you approach it what you want to do with it so okay. marketing in general for borussia dortmund is extremely different than marketing in general for uh, manchester city manchester city is not a very traditional club however they are there for 100 years but they're not a traditional club yeah. but borussia dortmund is so again that's why it's very hard for me to answer in <laughs> no. um just one view correct correct no i i get it and, and uh, with your background uh, uh with the infrastructure side or the working with the club side to from the stadium development to commercialization it, it falls under the whole consulting approach so what are the what are the typical opportunities that a consulting company has uh, when when they actually target uh, a club uh, and and what kind of roi those those federations or, or sorry the clubs or the franchises looking at uh, from this kind of consulting um again so do we want to do consulting no sport 5 i especially my department if you ask me or my boss we don't want to do consulting but that's how you get an entry into the club. That's right. just the way it is, right? Um, what model that we would like to do is, is basically we call it Groupama Arena model. So that's national ex-national stadium of Hungary that we are operating. So there, what we do is we go in and uh, we negotiated a deal with FTC, who's the tenant club. So we do everything in the stadium and for the club. So. Uh, we manage their ticketing, we do their sponsorship sales, we do hospitality, corporate events, um, F&B, every single thing. And then we also okay. look at pitch, we also look at stadium infrastructure, we look at maintenance okay. services, administration. So we have our team of 18 people on site. And I cannot give you exact details of the model. Yeah, um, but yeah. what I can tell you is that what we want to do is we want to take over everything so that you can focus as a club on your key business, which is players and which is engaging with fans. You focus on content, you focus on players, we worry about everything. Now, there are lots of different ways you can play with it. So if there's a club in, let's say, um, Qatar. So in Qatar, the local league is not very profitable and every single club, my guess would be, and I'm not an expert, so I might be wrong here, uh, would lose a lot of money. So if they're losing 2 million, what we want to do is we want to get in, we want to make sure you lose only 1 million, it's still 1 million savings. And then out of the savings that we do, 
um, uh, we take a certain amount of as a management fee to make sure mm -hmm. that you don't bleed out completely. Yes, that's a bad example. But in those markets, even a million savings or 10 year period is a lot of money right? right? that you can invest in some of the other things. So that's one way to look at it. The other way is Groupama model where we take care of everything. We give a minimum guarantee. And then on basis of minimum guarantee, if we achieve that, there's a different share. If we don't, there's a different share. And so there are lots of different models we can play around with. Mm -hmm. So consulting is not what we want to do, but consulting is how we get in. So to give you an example, right. in case of Real Sociedad, when they were building their new stadium in San Sebastian in 2017, we approached them and we went in and at that time they had already started constructing one tier of the stadium, so one whole section. Um, so we were anyway late, but then we went in, we changed their hospitality concept, we changed certain parts of their design so that the stadium that was designed by a construction company looked more like uh, a football yeah. uh, best, best commercializing um, stadium that you can build on those circumstances. So that's where we want to go. So we want to come in very early. We want to make sure that design is okay, the concept is okay, so that you think about operations which you want to do in 36 to 48 months, you think about it right now. Because you don't think about operations and commercialization right now, whatever you build is not going to be sufficient of what you want to do in three years from now. Mm -hmm. So that's how we usually work. So we can come in doing a consulting like we did with uh, Real Sociedad. We did feasibility, we explained it to them. Uh, we build their business plan for five years on basis of how it could grow, how they can refinance. Um, once done, that consulting part, then we were hired for another year to help them set up their complete sponsorship department, which I was fortunate enough to lead. Um, so we set up their inventory, we set up their pricing, packaging, approach, approaching to the market, training the sales guys, so on and so forth, and acquiring uh, one of the sponsors. So, and then we also supported them in security, cleaning, f and B, a little in mm -hmm. ticketing also. So again, it's a mixture of things. We don't want to do consulting, but it could be a way to get in. But ultimately the goal is to do as many things as possible so that club can focus on their core business. Mm -hmm. Great. So, uh, uh, yes, as, as you rightly said, right, uh, the uh, consulting is not something that you want to do, but probably it's, you end up doing it to get an entry and then start doing it, uh, start helping the club. So when you uh, enter a club uh, and you uh, and then what is the core business that you actually want to do uh, or, or you end up doing uh, beyond consulting, which actually helps the club uh, in the whole process? Um, so every club is different, right? It, it would be very hard for me to say that, okay, this is what we do. We want to do as much as possible, but that's not how every club would want to work, right? So in case of Real Sociedad, we knew from day one, they would never give anything regarding ticketing to an external company. Ticketing is something which is very inherent, inherently close to the club, right? But they were happy to talk about sponsorship. They were happy to learn about FNB. Now, in case of Groupama Arena, their ticket sales were really bad. So when we started in, it was a new arena. And before the new arena was built, their average attendance was 5,000 seater. 5,000 mm -hmm. or something. Now it's close to 14,000 or 20, oh. 22,000 seater arena. In six years, we have developed it quite a much. It's not a lot, but still it's decent yeah. for a Hungarian market where in six years, we never had a, a first year when it was just started. Then we had a negative EBIT, but in the last five years, we never had a negative EBIT. We always made money for the club in Hungary mm -hmm. and our guarantees are pretty high. So it's yeah. not like we are doing something um, which was a pretty easy and small number. So to give you an idea, we started in 2014. Uh, at that time, they had no hospitality and Hungarian market has no had no hospitality concept, right? We came in, we created everything. First year for six months, we generated 300,000. And now we are generating just in terms of revenue, more than 3 million. Mm -hmm. So um, again, it depends on what, club strengths are what their weaknesses are and on basis of it we can figure out okay where can we come in what can we do what is our core business and then what is the guarantee or what is the kind of structure we can have so that it's mm -hmm. beneficial for both parties because it's not zero-sum game 
it's a positive sum game we want to increase the pie so that everyone benefits yes and that's what we sort of look for that okay what is their strength can we add to that what is their def- weakness which we can definitely improve mm-hmm. now if you look at sport 5's business model we have lots of different things but the bread and butter is comprehensive marketing or sponsorship and and hospitality sales so if we can then we definitely would offer that to the club but not every club would want that so again right. it depends correct right. so you also mentioned about uh, like in in your capacity or in your role you also are part of the startup ecosystem and uh, innovation lab uh, or the innovation hub which is there internally so what kind of changes that you have seen in the whole uh, the technology world in which are supporting the whole fan tech uh, or sports tech so what what kind of trends that you been uh, seeing it depends on how mature the market is who you are targeting right an italian club is different than a club in uk right mm-hmm. so how developed the club is how good their current structure is dictates what kind of solution they would like to have now mm-hmm. what i like about the ecosystem that's been developing slowly and slowly slowly within lagadere and also outside is there are lots of good solutions coming out Um, and which is all great and good but the problem that i have is twofold right um first one is that very little view is given to how the people who would actually implement the solutions um yeah uh, would like a solution to work so everyone talks about yeah we can do let's say for example fan engagement sure you can do fan engagement there are 100 different ways you can target the fans and there are lots of different ways you can uh, get return on investment yeah. which is all good but at the end of the day you talk to a commercial director he's not going to do it the guy who's sitting somewhere in marketing department or if there is a data department they have to do it right? right so lots of startups and lots of mentors they don't think from that point of view that okay who's going to do that inside the club because if they are not doing it right then you can get in for 3 months but there is no fourth month because club will see that yeah but i'm not getting any return on the investment right. however much you want to do it doesn't matter you have to think from that person's point of view mm-hmm. and also if you do everything yourself then the question would be okay why would club need that particular person so that's why they are even guarded if you do everything so it has to mm-hmm. be somewhere in the middle um so that's one thing and second thing is a lot of startups are focused on just few areas right and so fan engagement sure a club would need one two three tools to do that but they're not going to need 10 tools and then you have yeah. fan engagement 50 startups in uh, in europe 50 in us 15 uh, asia just i don't know the numbers i'm just saying to yeah. give you an example so there's too much focus on just one or two areas like variables and fan engagement but there's very little focus on stadium infrastructure stadium construction right. stadium operations and that's a industry which is even if you take a small amount of that big pie if you even take 1% of 70 million mm-hmm. it's still 700000 euros which yeah. even if you do a pretty spectacular fan engagement it will take you a lot of time to get to this level yes. of 700000 euros yes so there's too much focus on certain things and there's zero focus or i would say 1% focus on the other things and the size of the pie it, it doesn't add up so th- there has to be a balance somewhere and that's where i see the whole ecosystem is sort of not coming to terms and now with covid when um i don't know how things going to be um i think it's going to be normal in next 6 to 8 months yeah. um but the tv money <laughs> for next 6 to 8 years is it going to grow at the same pace that it was before maybe maybe not my feeling is more towards not right so if money is not going that fast then clubs have to diversify okay how are you going to diversify sponsorship once you sell main sponsorship for 5 years you can't do much it's done you would be right. happy if you sell it for 5 years so where can you get the whole um, traction where you can generate extra income it's the stadium yes. and and so someone has to start looking into that area and whoever looks uh, there's definitely a opportunity there and that's what i feel in general about the ecosystem excellent and uh, i think uh, 
uh, it it now uh, coming more and more with the whole infrastructure of the club is so uh, we we hear so much of sustainable uh, infrastructure uh, and uh, so they getting the lead certified uh, like manchester united uh, having the, uh, the the whole stadium is arena is about using their own waste and making sure it is carbon zero kind of thing so how much of that requirement is coming up from the clubs uh, when you are planning the whole strategy it's it's a bit tricky so in spain infrastructure is 30 years old right and clubs are very traditional they don't have international people working for them now yeah. it's starting to change with their approach to different international markets but in general they are very traditional clubs with very old buildings Right. right in germany it's a it's a different story in germany you have new stadiums because of the world cup in 2006 right. a lot of new infrastructure was created and because of that the ecosystem is completely different here it's very mature market it's way yeah. far ahead than everyone else right, right. in europe so uh, depending on the market uh, you have different requirements in case of spain having a good stadium where they can commercialize in the best way and engage their fans and a very good way would be a win mm-hmm. so when you're building a new stadium now we are pushing about sustainability and other aspects of it but everything costs money and right. if you're a traditional club in spain your project is 70 million and if you want to do lots of sustainable things then you have to be very smart that okay what can i do is not going to break my bank right, right? i'm not going to invest another 10 million or doing something right because for them 70 80% of money is going to come from the club coffers right okay. it's not america america based model that your local council or someone is investing 200 300 million euros in a 500 million project it's not right. going to happen right yeah. so they have to be very cautious about it so now they're looking for smart solutions so okay how can we um, harvest rainwater so that's something which is not very costly you can do it okay how can we do recycling so when okay. you talk about recycling and all those things it's 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 very interesting because then you can get a partner in where you can do sort of a deal where it's cash plus barter it's complete barter or whatever and then the partner comes in you educate people and then do do lots of stuff to um, yeah. to completely shift how a the club works and how b the fans think so yeah. it's much more about right now how to engage fans and how to do sustainability in a decent way now post covid if government says that okay whichever whoever is building new stadium and if they want to put complete solar roof uh, with panels and everything and will subsidize 60% of the cost then sure a lot of clubs will look so it yeah. again depends what support is uh, from the local council from the state council and from the central government and on basis of it you can play around with um, the opportunities there so there's no Does one it- size that fits all yeah and uh, so basically what it says is uh, you don't have uh, requirements coming in not all the time but that is something that you also can go back in the proposal which can, kind of shows the value add uh, to the clubs as well uh, that yeah from so uh, like when yeah. we talk about the second pillar which was design mm-hmm. in that one we sit with the architect and we go with the club and the stakeholder one floor one floor one floor every seat every corner every nook and we look nice. okay what can be done here what's needed here how we can commercialize it how we can save the cost here but making sure that it's fan friendly it's sponsor friendly right. so with all those things um uh, you always try to look okay where is the angle we can put sustainability and environment also in it so that's right. that's how it is um that's how we look at it so and that's why we work we want to work on those four pillars sometimes we work on one or two sometimes just three so again it it depends oh, interesting so uh, sort of uh, what are the typical uh, roles which are available in the in the consulting for the for aspirants who wants to be in the in the sports industry or the mba grads who want to make a career out of sports and the consulting side of it what kind of typical roles and what are the qualities that you need to have to be part of this um look the business is common sense business we're not building rocket science uh, rocket ship here so it's it's a very common sense business now to have the common sense you need to have an idea of where to look for which information now to look in a particular direction you need to understand how many different areas do you have so any aspirants um, i would suggest to them is um, so 
I'm not the best example, but it worked out okay for me is that you talk to a lot of people, you figure out lots of different areas and you identify three or four, the most interesting ones that you think. Um, you also look at market conditions, right? Because uh, if you're doing something which 100,000 people are already doing it, that's not something where you can come in as a fresh graduate and completely yeah. change the ball game, right? So you look at what's going on around you and then you choose the topics you want to focus on. And you also look on how your market is shaping up. Right. And then on basis of it, you, divide, you identify the topics and you start going down that rabbit hole. You dig deep and deep and deep and try to figure out, talk to as many people as possible, prepare information notes that you can go back again and again, because it would help you to prepare yourself. But the more you talk to people, the more you read, the more you express yourself out or share knowledge with others, whether it's your peers who also are looking for jobs or whether it's just writing blogs or, or doing something around it, the more confidence you'll have and the better you would be in presenting yourself, right. right? So that would be one of the ways you can go. And I cannot say that, okay, these are the four things that would be extremely interesting, but I would say that, okay, understanding about data is very important, artificial intelligence and uh, data related topics. Um, understanding about just the basic of how a club functions. So what are the different areas they look at? What are the different mm -hmm. costs they look at? That's very important. Um, if you know esports, then it's a hot topic. It could be interesting, uh, right. especially in a market like India where it is very nascent and not yet developed. So um, again, it, it, there's no one size fits all. With, so in my MBA, we were told that whenever you want to answer something, just always answers with, it depends. It's the best <laughs> answer for everything. Yes, so that's yes, what yes. I'm doing. It, it depends uh, where you want to go, what you want to do. But you have all the resources, which right. a lot of people didn't have four or five years ago. Right. You had a lot more accessibility in terms of reaching people and asking them. And lots of people, I would say um, a significant sum are genuinely nice people. Right. So if you talk to them, they're happy to guide you. And so there's no harm in going there and ask, but be prepared. You don't want to go there, ask, and then it's something that you can find on the internet. So right. be prepared, a smart question, and you can only do that once you prepare. So you have to be very sure where you want to go. And those those are the points I would mention. Uh, excellent. And uh, sort of one last question about uh, the geography that you work in, uh, the whole European geography, which is very advanced when it comes to uh, sports as a culture. Uh, so how do you see you have, you have lived in India, you stayed born, brought up and then moved there. So what is the thing that you feel that uh, is can be done specifically in Indian market, which you see there and feel, okay, why can't we do it in India and we can still make it happen. So I would want to definitely, and that's also part of business thinking, yeah. infrastructure. Infrastructure is the base on which you build anything. If infrastructure right. is not there, you can have the best fan engagement tool, but okay, there is no fan there. Yeah. So we have to figure out how to improve infrastructure in India, mm -hmm. right? And it's not just, I'm not talking about stadiums. Stadiums is just one part of the puzzle. Yeah. It starts with very grassroots level, right? It's so normal pitches, normal programs. So uh, something like, um, uh, I don't know how big a fan uh, you are of American football, but there's a... Yeah. Um, there's a college football and there's a NFL. So the yes. two-tiered structure, I really like it for most of the things. Correct. So can we build a two-tiered structure where in India you can, and India is massive. If you and can, US can do it, India can also do it, right? Yeah. So we are also massive. But if we divide all those different, um, different regions and different sub functions or sub conferences and then have different universities and different colleges inside who encourage sports and who have those basic infrastructure, then things will change. And right. to support that, maybe there's an opportunity for local councils and state councils and government central to talk about, okay, if you sponsor, it's not one-to-one, -one, but uh, if you sponsor to build these infrastructure services to sponsor local sports and everything, whatever money you invest in, you'll get 
it is uh, yeah you'll right. get a tax break of uh, 30% of whatever you invest in it's still a 30% saving for those right. guys right, right. Um, so there are lots of ways you can engage brands in but it has to be private and public partnership right. but it starts with infrastructure mm-hmm. and unless it's not at that level where if you are mahindra you want to get in you've already done sports so i'll do sports sure but there's so many local companies who are also big who want to support their community but options are not there so a way to bring grass sports grassroots sports infrastructure with a solid plan that could work right. and that's something that i should i think we should definitely look at the us model it's not easy but could be could be at least yeah, thought of exactly i think i think very well put through it's not about uh, uh, stadiums it's about the grassroots level development it's about having the accessibility to the uh, playing arenas and the quality of that i think that plays a big role in building sports as a culture and as a lifestyle so yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, sir, with that saurav i it was uh, really wonderful talking to you and uh, wanted to understand a different aspect of uh, how the whole infrastructure side and the stadiums and the consulting side in the europe works and uh, uh, and also it's something for the students to understand that if they want to be a career in europe what are the typical ways and i i know there's no one size fits all kind of thing but at least uh, as something that they can look up to and uh, see okay this is also a role or, or a road that we can take yeah, sure no and uh, thanks again for inviting me said it was really nice uh, talking with you and i hope to speak with you soon yes looking forward to that saurav and uh, take care and stay safe uh, talk to you soon yeah super same huh? cheers yes, bye yes cheers bye thank you for liking thank you for sharing and thank you for watching but please do subscribe on our channel sports c says and follow sports c says across all the social media handles help us spread the word of sports c less talk sports please subscribe to sports c says mm-hmm.